custodian of uh, a couple of ERAs. Marcus, I think we're adding Nick Fennell. Maybe that was Nick in the Lotus 25. Well, yes, he's got a similar kind of crash helmet to... Uh, There's uh, Ludovic. I bet that the years roll away. Ludovic here, after he'd won that very, f after he'd won that very first race, and actually got the revival meeting underway. At the end of that meeting, he and I and another friend, Robert Brooks, were standing down in front of the pits. Um, they were sharing a glass of, of, of his lordship champagne, and I teetoed, so I couldn't or didn't but didn't want to but the point was that on the on the pit roof here a military band was playing the okey cokey and ludovic just sighed and said it doesn't get any better than this does it <laughs> and we've really i don't think we've got better ever since but we've at least stayed as good we've just seen one of the hwms there's one with a jaguar engine one with a cadillac engine um the cadillac one the um Pretty March in 2016, two years ago, in the hands of Richard Woolmer. Look at this lovely lineup of cars. It's great, isn't it? The Morgan SLR, you can see there, the Keith Arler's car um, on the right hand side. Absolutely beautiful. Also, the Aston Martin uh, DB3 that won the first of the three nine hour races here back in 1952, Peter Collins and Pat Griffith. And that car that also won that uh, um, the finale last year. In the hands Which of is Hall. and that car is for sale. If you want to buy a historic DB3 Frankie Dario, he gets some good rides. Doesn't he, he does. The that's the lovely 250 short wheelbase, reminding us of Sterling driving, winning two TTs in Rob Walker's car, and we're going to be celebrating Rob tomo uh, tomorrow. early days of the uh, revival there were also some uh, handicaps handicap races for the uh, Ebby Ebblewhite trophy the legendary uh, uh, Brooklyn's handicapper and uh, there was a Scott Gaze handicap for single seaters for uh, the first three years as well that um, Scott Gaze handicap I remember, was fantastic for the yeah. side of the little 500 that was leading um, uh, on handicap rapidly being caught by Hurricane Polk in the Lotus 49 <laughs> and the disparity between the two cars coming down the Lavin Strait was extraordinary. But in reality it was probably only about 15 years of evolution of car wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. which really proves that the Goodwood period coincided with this incredibly revolutionary period in racing car design. Absolutely, I think the Goodwood period was the best period we could say. <laughs> So our parade is parading. We've got some Manx Nortons that have won the Barachin over the years. Yeah, Barry himself uh, a race winner and the, uh, and the revival by the nearest of uh, thousands of seconds. We've just missed seeing the Aston Martin DP212 that in the hands of Simon Hadfield won that incredibly wet TT three, four years ago. Five years back. Was Aston it five Mars years ago? Centenary, yeah. And there's the unique, or they only made two, Lagonda V12 Lagondas that never worked properly in period, but have been sorted out since. The list of Bristol in there I saw, and there was Sir John Chisholm with his uh, ex Mike Parks, Gemini, the Scarab, Offenhauser. Top 25 BRM, thank you. <laughs> Gary Pearson, winning as driver at the uh, final meeting, 12 wins. And there's Richard, Richard Atwood. Atwood. Yeah, who's won, uh, who's won eight uh, races here, including a couple of TTs with uh, Mark Hale and uh, the, the early days. Richard won the, the Glover Trophy in 2000 and 2003 in the BRM 261. Why has he got his hand up? No, he's waving. Oh, he's waving. Uh, I thought it was the usual BRM. It's, oh. it's failing, but Thank it's not. Gary Pearson, who's driving the, uh, the Marshall Bailey-owned uh, Cambridge cigarettes liveried uh, Lola T70, yes, he's won 12 races here over the years. Jaguar C-Type, Cooper Type 33, Jaguar D-Type, BRM Type 25, and, and that's Lola T70. Richard Atwood, second on the all-time winners list with eight. He was a period winner here uh, as well. And uh, we've got five drivers on six wins. Mark Gillies, who drives the Green ERA today, back in the hands of Dick Skipworth, that car. Uh, Peter Hardman. Uh, Ludovic Lindsay, who's leading the parade in Remus, as you know. Who would love to overtake that Porsche. Absolutely. Frank Sittner and uh, Chris Ward, all of them six times winners. Rod Jolly, Julian Mazoub, 
Andy Middlehurst, Barry Williams on five apiece. Mark Hales, John Harper, Darren McWurser, Martin Walford, Bobby Verdon Road, John Young, and Martin Stratton all on four. Period winner Derek Bell, uh, Alex Buncombe, Tony drawn a hat trick in the glorious Ferrari Dino sports car we see out there. Simon Hadfield, Emanuele Piro, Danny Sullivan, Grant Williams, and Tom Christensen all on three. So that uh, goes back to the beginning. There's the Aston Martin DB3 that. Uh, Competed at the nine hour race here at Goodwood. It did rather more than compete, it won it. It won it, and uh, Peter Collins was driving it. It's not, it wasn't very successful. It was replaced by the DB3S, which was a, a much more winning car. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little uh, uh, Lola uh, Mark II we just saw, the four front engine Formula Junior. Formula Junior runs here in uh, three separate uh, groups front engine, rear engine, drum brake, rear engine, disc brake and occasionally seeds to 500cc Formula 3. There's Dario Franchitti with the Ferrari. Uh, Is there a prettier GT shape than the 250 short wheelbase? No. Well, the A35 perhaps. I've only driven a, uh, a short wheelbase once, which was absolutely fantastic. But the important thing was I drove it here at Goodwood on the race circuit on a test day. And uh, a, a day I'll never forget. A lot of um, very experienced Ferrari drivers actually prefer the short uh, 250. Uh, short wheelbase to the GTO. Um, there are others who've got a lot of experience in GTOs who s tell you exactly the opposite. All subjective. That's what we like. That's the Lotus uh, 19 with the old school engine, a replica of the period cars, which Rob Huff drove here to uh, victory. Beautifully turned out car. And Rob's driving it uh, this weekend, isn't he, with the Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile engine at the back. That's right, that light uh, alloy uh, V8. Built by Chris Tolman's team up in uh, Rugby Way. There's a 500 there as well, because Julian Mazouk was the, uh, the dominant driver in the uh, early 500cc races. The yellow the car is the Ferrari 500 TRC. That's four-cylinder, I think. Two litre. Two, is it two litre? Chasing the Lincoln Green uh, ERA. Look at the difference in architecture between those two yeah, cars. Isn't that a great. Oh, look at the D type too, and then the Cobra. And the 500 in there too. What a, what a lovely image. It is. And um, so we just had the, uh, the Morgan SLR, one of three. <laughs> yes. Going through, which uh, looks rather different from any other Morgan you've seen. Yeah. Now from Mayo. The cars are pulling into the paddock, but we'll see this parade all our three days here this weekend at the Revival. And the Team 30's Lola T70 just coming up in the background. We're also going to have a demonstration by the Dan Gurney's Eagle, that fabulous, one of the most beautiful race cars of all time with its V12 engine. Uh, it's stayed here since the Festival of Speed as a tribute to Dan Gurney. And that is the 1967 Belgian Grand Prix winner. And it's uh, owned and maintained by the uh, Collier Collection, now the, the, the Revs Institute Museum in, in Naples, in Florida. And uh, Dan had huge respect for them. I promise you they had huge respect for Dan. Early days of Formula Junior a series, which ran from 1958 through to 63. List of Bristol. There's that Ferrari that Tony Dron scored the hat trick on sports car wins here with. That was extraordinary car with the Dino V6 engine, 2.4 litre, and it was incredible. It's got a, a fragile clutch. And Tony, in every one of those races that he won, uh, was very, very gentle in easing the car off the line. And so he, he would get through the swamped. first laps, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he would get swamped in the early stages, and then patiently work his way through the field, using the car's torque and power and balance to yeah, the full. Very lithe chassis. Yeah, lovely. Yes. James King in the Brabham. He was uh, Tony was good at preserving the tyres, wasn't he? Yes. So he yes. did the 
the, the speed didn't fall off towards the end no, of the race. He kept tyres on it. Richard so, Atwood, he was uh, playing cricket yesterday in the lovely Grand Prix winning little BRM, one and a half litre V8 BRM. That's the P261, the, uh, the, the 1500 CC car. Their most successful car, yeah. really. And, and they were running two litre form in Tasman racing races, and Richard ended up on his head um, at, at uh, Teratonga, which was the, at that time the most southern most well, racing. still is. <laughs> um, I think one in Argentina has overtaken mm, it, is it? Well, I think so. Down at Ushuaia or something yeah, like that. That's yeah. a funny, funny place. I've yeah. been to Teratonga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, Richard ended up on his head and was quite badly knocked about. He flew back to England, but he stopped off in America. And he, after being cramped in an airline seat for the full flight, he, he went to a massage parlor. <laughs> oh, right, as one does. <laughs> to ease his pain, and it didn't work at all. <laughs> Wrong sort of massage parlor. Poor Richard.